Hey everyone, Noel Christopher with Renner's Warehouse. I have the great privilege of having another article published in Forbes. This one's subject is the top 10 uh, tips for, for some investors. We work with a lot of different types of investors. Many of them are seasoned investors, whether they're accidental landlords or first time investors. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is number one is get your finances in order. Make sure you understand, you know, how much money you have for a down payment. Uh, uh, how much can you buy? Um, what is your strategy going to be? Number two is do your research. So really, really understand again, getting into the, about the finances, really understand about landlording, understand the differences in, in cap rates, uh, in different markets and what a gross cap rate is compared to a net cap rate. Uh, so the third thing is start small. So you don't need to go big. You don't need to buy uh, a whole huge portfolio of homes or a large multifamily property. You can start small. And that's what's great about um, about real estate investing in the single family rentals is that you can buy one house. And uh, the, the barrier to entry to, to that is, is pretty low. Uh, number four, know the numbers. So understand everything about the cap rates and yields and things like that. And it's important to understand those numbers and know them intimately and and really lean on people for that uh number five scout a location or market you know what's interesting is that don't be pigeonholed into buying in your local market if you're in a high cost market you know a lot of people uh what what they don't realize is that you can buy an investment par- property for less much less than you can buy a home that you want to live in there's this misconception out there that if if it's un- unaffordable to buy a home then it'd be unaffordable to buy investment properties what's great about the market these days is you can go into other markets other local markets and acquire an investment property for much less than the house that you would expect to buy number 6 um adopt a, a business owner mindset You really need to look at this as starting a business, even if you're buying that first home. You want to you want to really have that mindset and your mindset really dictates everything you do in life anyways. Number seven, get a mentor, find a mentor, go to, uh, you know, there's meetups, there's there's all kinds of different things you can go to that you can start to meet people that uh, invest in this space. And a lot of people love to share their wealth and knowledge. Um, I would be very careful about the the types of mentors that are going to charge you a, a large fee. And uh, there's a few out there that are good, but be very careful uh, about how you do that. Number eight, uh, start building relationships. Again, go to these meetups, go to to real estate investment clubs called RIAs, uh, find them in your local market and start to consume a lot of a lot of knowledge and find the people out there that are presenting the, the good knowledge. Uh, number nine create rock solid systems. It's important to make sure that even if you're owning one house and you're just starting and investing or you're owning 10, 20, 30, 100, uh, you need to make sure you have the right systems in place. What are you going to do for the property management? What are you going to do when there's a maintenance call? What are you going to do when a tenant um, doesn't pay their rent? What are you going to do when you need to market and re-rent the property and, and maybe even turn the property and, and get it ready for the new renter? You need to have those things in place and you need to lean on those experts to do that. And number 10, remember, cash flow is king. You know, uh, there's a lot of benefits for investing and you get a lot of tax write-offs and benefits and appreciation and all of those things, but you need to make sure the property cash flows to a level that it services the debt, services any repairs and maintenance. And it's not in the first five years always about how much money you put in your pocket each month. It's making sure you're servicing that property, you're growing that appreciation and maybe taking your profits and, and making sure that you have a good maintenance reserve set up. And then how are you gonna buy that next property? What is your plan to to go out and buy more properties? Because owning one property is one thing. Owning five properties is another. Owning 10 properties is really start where you start to see the really great benefits. So there you go. Enjoy the article, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.